now we will discuss the uh, pelvic diaphragm and perineal body so uh, pelvic diaphragm is basically composed of a muscle that is known as levator ani having basically three components morphologically that is pubococcygeus iliococcygeus and ischiococcygeus ischiococcygeus part is also known as coccygeus also and this is rudimentary in human beings but more developed in lower mammals levator and i uh, muscle acts like a sling around the apertures situated within the urogenital area and this levator and i muscle is forming a gutter shaped partition that is separating the pelvic region into the pelvic cavity above and perineum below so this is the orientation of this pelvic diaphragm oblique gutter shaped muscular partition originating from the lateral pelvic wall and converging towards the midline leaving a gap anteriorly forming a sling around the structures passing over here so this is dividing divided into three parts pubococcygeus having various sub components iliococcygeus part and ischiococcygeus or coccygeus now about the origin of each and individual components of the pubococcygeus as better seen within this horizontal section showing the origin of the different component parts pubococcygeus is having pubo vaginalis pubo vesicalis pubo analis pubo rectalis and pubo coccygeus proper these are the component parts of the pubo coccygeus muscle this originates from the posterior aspect of the pelvic surface of the pubis and white line the anterior part of the white line that is a thickened part of the obturator for the obturator fascia in the lateral pelvic wall one more thing that is very important about the origin of this muscle that within the quadrupeds the origin of this levator and i muscle was from the pelvic inlet that is above the actual origin in human beings so it has been descended down in the higher mammals with the adoption of the upright posture because in quadrupeds its origin is higher up and when person start, uh, started standing uh, the weight of the viscera pelvic viscera due to gravitational effect the origin of this diaphragm has been shifted down in the lateral pelvic wall from this white line or thickened fascia or the lateral pelvic wall thickened obturator fascia so pubococcygeus is deficient anteriorly just behind the pubic symphysis forming a hiatus that is known as hiatus urogenitalis because urinary and genital apertures are situated here 
सो द एंटीरियर मोस्ट पार्ट दैट इज़ द प्यूबो वेजाइनालिस और प्यूबो वेसाइकैलिस दैट इज फॉर्मिंग अनदर कंपोनेंट दैट इज फॉर्मिंग अ स्लिंग अराउंड द प्रोस्टेट दैट इज नोन एज लिवेटर प्रोस्टैटी सो दिस इज द कंपोनेंट ऑफ द लिवेटर एन आई यूबोकॉक्सीजियस कंपोनेंट ऑफ द लिवेटर एन आई देन द नेक्स्ट कंपोनेंट दैट इज द प्यूबो एनालिस बिकॉज एनल कैनाल इज बिलो द रेक्टम सो दिस इज सिचुएटेड एट द लोअर लेवल दैन द प्यूबो रेक्टैलिस सो प्यूबो एनालिस इज इंसर्टेड और एनसर्कल्स दिस एनल कैनाल forming a u shaped sling pubo analis then the pubo rectalis component is originating from the anterior part of this white line and forming a sling around the rectum and it pulls the rectum anteriorly like this uh, suppose this is the pubic symphysis so uh, the pull of this muscle tuberectalis creates a curvature or pulls the anorectal junction anteriorly pulls the anorectal junction anteriorly so holding the fecal matter above Uh, involuntary descent of the fecal matter is controlled by this sling of the muscle that is a pubo rectal sling then the last part of this pubo coccygeus that is pubo coccygeus proper muscle originates from the white line anterior half portion and inserted onto this anoxygeal raphe and coccyx then the next part is the iliococcygeus iliococcygeus part arises from the posterior half of the white line over the lateral pelvic wall and it inserted onto this anoxygeal raphe and lower piece of the Uh, a lower portion of the sacrum then the ischio coccygeus or coccygeus part is corresponding to the sacrospinous ligament or we can say that this ligament is the aponeurosis of this ischio coccygeus or coccygeus muscle because in human beings this is rudimentary so this has been converted into a sacrospinous ligament originates from the ischial spine and inserted onto the lower piece of the sacrum and coccyx so that triangular muscle is the coccygeus muscle the function in lower animals was to move the tail but with the disappearance of the tail in human beings it pulls the sacrum and coccyx anteriorly usually happens after the child birth and passage of the feces sacrum is pushed backwards so with the help of this muscle this is pushed forwards and closes the posterior part of this pelvic outlet so what is the basic uh, function of this pelvic diaphragm this pelvic diaphragm supports the pelvic viscera from below and the anterior portion that is the pubococcygeus part uh, the component of this that is the pubovaginalis pubo vesicalis elevator prostate these are the parts of this pubococcygeus muscle anterior most fibers 
and they are controlling the uh, apertures in the hiatus urogenitalis so basically they are controlling or acting like a sphincter to the vagina and urethra and this is the location of the perineal body approximately 1.25 cm anterior to the anal anterior anal margin so this is the exact location of the perineal body perineal body is getting the insertion of the anterior most fibers of this pubococcygeus muscle that is the levator prosody and pubovesicalis and pubovaginalis portions so when uh, the perineal body is disturbed during childbirth or during any perineal surgeries then the sphincter mechanism is disturbed over here and apart from that the support to the pelvic viscera is also disturbed so now next we will discuss about the uh, muscles that are attached to the perineal body that is very important in females uh, this perineal body is a fibromuscular node situated in the uh, perineum and when seen in the sagittal view it's a pyramidal structure and at its apex it receives the attachment of the fascia that is a recto vesical fascia or recto vaginal fascia in females and various muscles are attached to this perineal body uh levator and i is commonly <coughs> attached structure and uh, only the anterior portion of the pubococcygeus means only this portion pubovaginalis or levator prostate muscle or anterior most fibers of pubococcygeus are attached to this perineal body not whole of the levator and i so uh, the paired muscle and unpaired muscle for easy remembrance we have to remember it or divide the muscles attached to the perineal body into paired and unpaired muscles paired muscles mein already told you the pubovaginalis component of this levator ni okay then bulbo spongiosus and superficial transverse perineae along with deep transverse perineae these all are the paired muscles levator ni muscle of the pelvic floor of pelvic diaphragm bulbo spongiosus and superficial transverse perineae muscles of the superficial perineal pouch and deep transverse perineae is the muscle of the deep perineal pouch so total of eight muscles and ki four paired muscles are attached to this perineal body among the unpaired muscles that are attached over here is the longitudinal muscle coat of the rectum and internal anal sphincter is attached so these two are the unpaired components and four paired muscles are attached to this perineal body it is commonly injured during the second stage of labor when the pressure on the 
uh, pelvic floor muscles is increased it gets torn and leads to the sphincter disturbances of the urethra and vagina and prolapse of the pelvic viscera this is uterus and urinary bladder uterus vagina and urinary bladder leading to the condition that is known as the prolapse prolapse means abnormal descent of the organ commonly uterus is involved in the prolapse condition so that was all about the pelvic diaphragm and the perineal body structures attached to this perineal body thank you